In this video, we apply an algebraic magic spell to a topological object and get new rich invariants. Let's talk about it. Hey, welcome to Math Life Balance. This is the third video in the series K Theory Wonderland, made with the help of my friend and colleague Peter Hay. In these videos, I try to share the beauty of research level math by talking about abstract ideas that make me excited. The main hero of the series is algebraic K theory and the motivation for exploring K-theory was briefly explained in the first video. Disclaimer for today's video, if you don't understand what we are saying, don't you worry, it's okay, no one understood K-theory from the first glance anyway. And just in case you're interested to learn more, you can find some references and more precise formulations of math statements in the video description below. So in the previous video, we talked about zeroth K-theory, which is an example of an invariant of algebraic varieties. Why do we care about invariants? Well, in general, humans always tend to have a desire to classify things as a natural way to understand the world better. And in math, invariants help to do that. Moreover, invariants provide bridges between areas of mathematics by making different objects relatable. Another beautiful way to think about invariants is that they play the role of adjectives in the mathematical language. They are the epithets that we use to describe, for example, geometric shapes. Without invariants, we wouldn't have a precise language to do it. So, how do invariants help us to classify algebraic varieties? For example, if two varieties have different values of the same invariant, then they certainly cannot be the same, cannot be isomorphic. There are rather coarse invariants, like dimension. It helps us to distinguish curves from surfaces, surfaces from threefolds, and so on. This invariant is usually easy to determine from a glance, but it carries little information. There are lots of curves that look completely different and have no matching properties, but they all have dimension 1. On the other hand, K-theory is a subtle yet rich invariant. It is hard to compute, but it carries deep information about your favorite algebraic variety. We will now see how to find in nature a richer invariant than just zeroth K-theory that we discussed last time. In fact, it won't be just one invariant. It will be a series of invariants, one for each natural number, K0, K1, K2, and so on. And to get them, we will see how to apply an algebraic operation in a topological context, together with Peter. So let's start with x that's an algebraic variety cut out by the solutions to some system of polynomial equations. Before, we considered the set pi zero vect x of isomorphism classes of vector bundles on x. But we can consider a more refined invariant, vect x, which is the space or CW complex of vector bundles on X, where the points are vector bundles on X and edges or paths between these points are isomorphisms of vector bundles. So this is really like a graph and in particular, it's a space that has no homotopy above pi one. Moreover, like how pi zero vect x was a monoid, the direct sum of vector bundles, this gives this space an addition up to homotopy. It turns out that there is a version of the group completion procedure for spaces. If we have a space with an addition up to homotopy, such as the space of vector bundles on x, we can apply group completion to get a new space. In analogy with the definition of K0, we define the K-theory space, K of X, as the group completion of the space of vector bundles on X. Now the space of vector bundles on X doesn't have any interesting higher homotopy, but this group completion procedure creates higher homotopy. So this K-theory space has higher homotopy groups. And the K-theory groups of X are these higher homotopy groups. So this gives a new collection of invariants of our algebraic variety, one for each natural number I. So we write Ki of X for the ith homotopy group of this new K-theory space. So, what does the group completion spell do to a space? 
it takes a space that has addition up to homotopy and artificially adds negatives to this space. In other words, it takes in a space whose set of connected components, pi0, is a monoid and gives back a space whose pi0 is a group. This group is exactly the group completion of pi0. And that's why zeroth k theory in the definition that we just saw agrees with zeroth k theory in, defined in the previous video as the group completion of the monoid of isomorphism classes of vector bundles. However, the magic of group completion is that the spell does not just change pi zero. No, it messes up completely all the homotopy groups of your space in an unpredictable way. In our example, we started with the space of vector bundles on an algebraic variety. The space had only pi zero and pi one being non-zero and all of its higher homotopy groups were trivial. But after applying group completion, we got the k-theory groups as homotopy groups, and in general, none of them is trivial. In contrary, they are super hard to compute, and that's what makes k-theory so complicated to study. So basically, group completion does what you ask it to do on the zeroth level of the space, for the price of creating chaos on all higher levels, which mathematicians then spend a lifetime trying to understand. Luckily, there is an example in which all k-theory groups can be computed. Let's see. We saw earlier that the k0 of an algebraic variety, in simple cases, can be described in terms of projective modules. This is also true for the k-theory space. For a ring R, we can take as the definition that the k-theory space of R is the group completion of the space of projective R modules where the addition is given by the direct sum operation. This lets us describe what the k groups of finite fields are. So we'll look at a finite field FQ where Q is a prime power. And like any field, there's one vector space for each dimension up to isomorphism. So k0 of FQ is a copy of the integers. So k0 can't distinguish between the different finite fields fq. However, the higher k groups can. In positive even degrees, it's actually zero. However, in odd degrees, 2j minus 1, the k-theory of fq is a cyclic group z mod q to the j minus 1. In particular, this group can distinguish between the different fields FQ. As we just saw, higher K groups appear from applying the magic spell of group completion in a more abstract context, to the space of vector bundles rather than to the monoid of vector bundles up to isomorphism, as for zeroth K theory. This way one gets the space of algebraic K theory, which in turn gives algebraic K theory groups as its homotopy groups. Next Friday, we will talk more about the beauty of this idea about the power of climbing up to a higher level of abstraction, and what a view of the valley you get to see from that peak. I only ever wear makeup to celebrate group completion. <laughs>